Hey y'all, Corey here from Grow Ensemble, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built these two Hugo culture beds in my landscape here in San Antonio, Texas. The tutorial to come is a blend of footage from these each two individual projects. It's a bit of a heavy lift for an individual person, considering all the, the digging that you have to do and, and wood that you have to move, but more on that in just a moment. Before we get into the nitty gritty uh, how to, let's talk very briefly about what even is Hugel culture and why you might consider employing this technique yourself. Hugel culture, which in German translates to mound culture, is a method of simply mounting diverse set of organic materials together to make a garden bed beginning first with larger logs, sticks, and twigs, and progressively working up to finer materials like finished compost and topsoil so that you can plant directly on top. All that organic material will break down over a long duration of time, feeding the soil above all the way throughout. Hugo culture can help with creating a, a better draining bed. If your native soils like our clay soils here in our part of San Antonio generally drain poorly. It can also retain more water as the woody materials soften and start to act like a sponge. Hugo culture is just generally a great way to repurpose your tree trimmings, prunings, and fallen trees in a way that will add a ton of nutrients directly back to your soil and help to infiltrate more water. It's recommended to find wood that's already slightly broken down, or if using fresh wood, be more considerate of adding nitrogen rich materials to the Hugel Mound, as the fresh wood might lock up some of that nitrogen. First, let's talk here about marking off, measuring your site. Mine is going here west to east uh, so that the sun throughout the day, there's not going to be any sort of uneven distribution of the sun that, that hits the bed as the day goes throughout. As well, it's marked off here with four white landscape flags. Nothing crazy. It's a four by eight space. That just being kind of a very standard raised garden bed size. And so I'm doing that for the sake of my own garden design and really, you know, thoughts about accessibility in managing the mound need be and as well harvesting, you know, ultimately when the, the time comes. And so nothing crazy there. You make your own decisions as to, to what uh, size seems appropriate for your mound, but you know, I wanted to keep these looking very similarly and likewise, you know, I have a sense for how I might access them and walk through with a, a two foot path there in between each. That might be a bit narrow. We'll see. There's always going to be updates on these videos for how many of these experiments went. But once it's marked off, simply it's time to get to the, the very difficult work of doing some digging. I'm not digging down that deep, just about four-ish inches. And so you could even start a Hugo culture mound, you know, flat from the ground level. Uh, it, it's, you know, a bit up to your choice, or you could dig things in a bit deeper. I'm digging in kind of somewhere in between, going very deep uh, and a surface level, just because I'll have some larger stumps and, and trunks that I want to get uh, down on that ground level, keeping the bed not so high, because as well, the finished one that you see over there, once uh, spring sowing comes, I wanna finish that off with another bit of topsoil and compost just to make sure I have the, the uh, a quantity of topsoil and compost that the, uh, the, the plants for spring that they'll need. Like I said, time to get digging here, going about four inches deep, most likely. This will be a, a project you'll see happen over the span of a couple days. Let's get going. Two digging sessions later, we got our initial hole here dug for our Hugel culture mound. It's not a perfect four inches in depth everywhere. You know, it's a bit difficult here as we start to really get into the, the firm clay of our soils here in Northwest San Antonio. So next step here is to start gathering up really large pieces of wood, stumps, old trunks uh, from trees that have been cut down 
to add into this base layer of the pit to really give it its shape and structure and ensure that, you know, like this mound here that I've already dug, that it will continue to be fed uh, over the course of the long duration that it will take for those stumps to break down. So I'm gonna go start gathering some and toss them in the hole. So I got some bits of trees uh, in, in trunks from stuff that had already started to, to rot and needed to be taken down on our property uh, within this last year. And so a lot of these do have good sign of, of breakdown decomposition already, making me think that they'd be most apt for a project like Google Culture in that they'll be more readily able to start breaking down and, and feeding the soil versus wood that's a bit more fresh and more recently alive. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this out and, and get these arranged for the next stage, start filling things in with, with other uh, organic matter, which I'll talk about more in a second. We got what feels to be a, a pretty good structure to the Hugel culture mound here with some reasonably sized logs, uh, a couple bits of, of stumps here, things that ideally will take a while to break down. And so now with this base established, we're gonna start adding more material that is high in nitrogen, uh, what we think of more as greens in a typical compost, compost pile. I'm gonna go collect some of those things. Actually, first I'm going to get uh, what are some fermented food scraps from my Bakashi composting system that I run here because I need to unload some of those, those buckets. And as well, I think that will be um, a, a really good accelerant to help some of this more uh, established kind of fresher wood start to uh, break down more quickly. So we'll start there, but then it's gonna be everything else from leaves that have collected from our, our oak trees, which we have endless amounts of, uh, other smaller twigs and branches. Of course, we're gonna start layering in some of the soil here and, and backfill the pile and start to, to raise it up. But I'm gonna go first start with the Bakashi, and then from there, continue to throw all sorts of different uh, organic debris into this pile till we start to pile it up more so like that pile that you see over there. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we go with the Bakashi fermentations. Some of these things have been sitting in these buckets for a few weeks. Others have been sitting here for a few months. So these will be good to, to really start to fill in a lot of those crevices. Okay, and so immediately on the, the Bakashi, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the, the, the topsoil back in. Making soil contact with the Bakashi fermentation is, is essential for finishing that process, turning that just from a fermentation into finished compost. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this will be a lot of really nitrogen rich material that will you know, help contrast all the wood that we just put in there. Uh, and will ultimately feed, feed the pile uh, for some time to come. And the great thing is that I'm doing this now here in January. I'm not gonna sow this until maybe six weeks from now, uh, six weeks to, to two months. And so it'll really give time for everything to settle here, but need to go grab a shovel. Okay, so just an initial soil layer on there on top of the Bakashi to, to interact with that there. But now it's time to get loading up with everything else. Leaves, you know, more sticks and twigs, and then as well, this soil. So we'll get dumping. All right, we got a collection of things, leaves and sticks and 
the Pakashi uh, compost there, the fermented food scraps or you know, just the, the Pakashi fermentation. And so now we're gonna backfill uh, the soil on top. Uh, and then I'll ultimately cover that soil with a, a level of uh, mulch, wood chip mulch. Uh, I just kind of like that for the sake of, you know, how we're gonna mulch the, the pathways. And then on top of that, I'm gonna add some finished compost, which I, I did have to pick up at the nursery. You know, we haven't been on this property all too long, so we're not able to, to produce our own compost needs completely here just yet. Uh, but we'll finish it with compost. That'll be done for our time here, but then uh, come the uh, the late winter early spring sowing I'm gonna uh, add some some finished topsoil maybe a little bit more compost on top uh, and sow directly into it it's good periodically to to compact this down you want to reduce a lot of the air pockets uh, throughout or really the, the nooks and crannies for, for pests and things uh, to make themselves at home. All right, at this point, after having backfilled the mound with the variety of organic material that we gathered from all over our property, and then of course, uh, the soil that we had previously dug out now I think the job gets a little bit easier, starting first with sheet mulching with cardboard, what would be a path around the mound and between the mounds and, and, and other uh, fixtures in our growing food forest garden. But you don't have to do this, it's not necessary. I like to do it to help keep some of the grasses at bay and, and other weeds, and as well, ultimately make things a bit tidier. So you can do this with a roll of cardboard or boxes that you collect over time. The roll is much easier, but often you do have to buy those from some sort of shipping and packaging store. So you go ahead and, and lay those all around uh, to make about a two foot pathway uh, immediately surrounding the mound. Following that, it's time to add on top a layer of, of well broken down wood chip mulch. This mulch has been sitting on our property for maybe about six to eight months. So it's not completely fresh. You dig deep enough, you start to see some of the decomposition process really taking place. And so I feel good about putting a clean layer of this on top of the mound. And then as well, of course, on top of uh, the previously laid cardboard to make that path more permanent. So gathering that up and making sure that that's smooth around the mound. We get now to the stage of adding our finished compost. And so we've only been living on this property uh, now full time for a little over a year. So we haven't yet really created the, the uh, full compost that we need to sustain ourselves here on site. Gonna do much more of that as, as we can over time. So I did have to acquire a lot of fresh compost uh, to get maybe about four to six inches on top of that uh, wood chip layer. And so spread that out nice and evenly. The mound now looking very clean. The last thing I do is uh, water everything in. And so spring sowing comes for us in San Antonio. That'll be maybe February, early March. You can even get started in January, depending on where you're at, uh, after uh, some threats of frost, and depending on the crop. But at that point, I'm going to add on top of that an additional layer of fresh topsoil, maybe mixed in with a bit more compost to ensure that I have the full six-ish uh, or so inches immediately from that previous wood chip layer so that the plants that will grow have enough space uh, to expand their roots um, uh, uh, without coming into contact with those wood chips directly to give them some time to break down. All right, y'all, that's a wrap for this video on how I'm creating Hugel culture beds in my own landscape. I'm curious to hear about your own experience in employing Hugo culture or likewise, if you think there's something that I missed, maybe something I should do differently, uh, don't hesitate to let me know with a comment down below. And make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to updates on the results of these beds in this planting season to come. 
Uh, I'll, I'll likewise create a follow-up to this as to how I'm going to be seeding these mounts in their, their first uh, year, as that might be a different technique as, as things progress on, and all the, the contents and materials down below uh, continue to, to settle in and, and break down. And finally, if you liked this video, then you'll love my weekly newsletter, The Weekly Ensemble where together with change makers and sustainability enthusiasts from all over the globe, each week we explore the art of living and working sustainably. If you're interested and wanna see what that's all about, go to growensemble.com backslash newsletter to get that next email in your inbox. All right, y'all, until next time.